Man, I really need a haircut. Look at those bags under my eyes. Jeez. Huh? Oh, we're on. Oh, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of this exciting engine build for my Carmen gear. So, standard 1300 engine. If you haven't watched the previous parts of the rebuild, go and do so if that's what you need to watch to build your engine. So in this episode, we are finally gonna fit the pistons and the cylinders. And to top that off, we're gonna put the cylinder heads on. So there's a few things we have to do um, to make that happen. So I'm gonna work through them bit by bit. As you can see behind me, I've already put the um, piston cylinders and the head on, um, on one side. Because reading in this book, you should torque the um, nuts up each side of the case for some reason, something to do with the balance of the uh, compression on the uh, engine case. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's why I went ahead and installed these first and then I thought I would talk through um, the rest of it as I'm doing it. So what do we have on a table? So we have obviously the pistons ready to go on with the um, cylinders. So we honed them, we put new rings on, we checked the orientation, um, made sure the gudgeon pins weren't too loose in the brass bushes. Um, we put the valves in and we ground them, um, lapped them, and other bits we got. Now this is a very significant piece, although it doesn't look like it. And one of the famous British engine builders got a proper roast in for building a Volkswagen engine and forgetting to put this in. So we're not gonna forget to put that in. And let's get it on. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put some of this silly gasket on around the edge of the cylinder. Now, in my opinion, I don't think it's very silly, but that's what it says on the can. And this is by Kent, and that's what's recommended to you. So I think it's just normal silicon sealant. So this is really cool. It has this neat little nozzle on there and you just like push the nozzle and it comes out. So there's obviously compression, compressed gas in there or whatever, like an aerosol. So we're actually gonna put it round uh, this seal that goes against the um, block itself, against the case of the engine. Now you can use these paper gaskets that fit on here and you can see where it actually seals, so it's along that line. But I'm not gonna use them because we're using gasket seal. I don't really see the point of using the paper gasket as well as this silicon. Um, I don't, it does say in the book you can or uh, you don't need to use them. So I'm choosing not to because I don't see the point. So we're just basically gonna put the silicon around the edge like this. And I'm actually putting a bit too much on here, but. I think I cut the end of the nozzle off a bit too big. So we're gonna run with that, it doesn't matter. Boom. Right, I've actually marked on the cylinder which number cylinder this is gonna be because we have that orientation arrow. So this is um, in the right orientation for number three. So it's good to mark everything. Then, then you don't have to figure it out when you're putting it together. Okay, it's quite excessive, so I'm actually gonna wipe a bit of that off. Otherwise, it's gonna go everywhere. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna start by number three. Um, so I have put the conrod up to its highest point, meaning the, um, that cylinder will be at top dead center. That allows me more room to be able to get the gudgeon pin in. And if you don't know already, um, this is the, towards the front of the car. So this is the flywheel, this is the back of the car. And the way we number the cylinders is one, two, three, and four. So number three we're gonna do. Okay, so if we get the orientation right, so the flat piece goes to the middle, we're going to slide the cylinder down, move the con rod so it fits inside. Okay, then I need to lift it up just a little bit and look down the other side so it lines up with the con rod. 
and then you have to start tapping the gudgeon pin in. There you go, you can feel when it's right. You don't have to go crazy, just tap it and you can feel when it's right and there you can see it's starting to go in. Okay, tap it all the way in and then make sure it goes snug against the clip on the other side. So that's perfect. Okay, then you get your spring clip, sir clip, whatever you want to call it. These come in different um, forms. I think these are the original type. You can even get like these nylon bungs that you just push in there. And I've never used them, but I've heard that they're really good, but I don't have them. I have these old um, style ones. So a pair of needle nose pliers, and you just wanna, you wanna make sure that there's spring in these because you want that to snap in there nicely and tightly. So, you can hear it when it goes in. There you go. And I always just rotate it a little bit to make sure it's home. Perfect. Okay, so when that's in, you can then slide this cylinder down, the bore, making sure your head studs line up and then that will squeeze your silicone sealant. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same, we're going to turn over the engine until the other con rod is at its highest point. Okay, so perfect, they both went in nicely. You can see the silicon is nicely compressed and they're nicely seated. Um, one thing I haven't talked about is something called deck height. And that, what that is, it's basically the gap between the top of the cylinder and the top of the piston. You can see that it's not quite level. And you can, when I was building my last engine, I had to measure this because I was using aftermarket pistons, cylinders, everything. And because it was um, upgraded, everything was upgraded, um, I had to make sure that everything was compatible with different manufacturers, etc. But because this engine has been together previously, I'm pretty confident that this is fine. And you can clearly see that this piston is not going to go above this cylinder uh, top and smash into the valves because this is at the highest point that it will go. So that's something to bear in mind if you're building something a bit more high performance. Okay, so next up is putting the head into position. So you obviously make sure everything's clean. We've been through that, etc. And we have this, which I'll explain a bit more when we fit it. And then we have what you call the push rod tubes. So Push rod tubes have these rubber seals on and over time they get brittle and they can start leaking. And you can clearly see that these actually have these, it's like an, uh, um, what's the instrument you can play, accordion? Like those bellows. It has like these bellows things and what they do is when you tighten the head down, these compress and give a good seal. So you just pop these on each end like this and it recommends in the book, and it's not normally something that I say, but you want to put these in dry. You don't want to put any lubricant or sealant on there because this rubber does the job. So we're going to pop these rubbers on. They go, they're tapered. So the widest part goes towards the bellow. Okay, so with those done, right, if we look on the head, so this, this is like the face that faces the case of the engine. So these fit inside here, you can see quite snugly. And these are your push rods. So I have brand new push, push rods and they, this is what houses those basically. So we'll put those in later. 
Um, but the next and very, very important step before you put the head on, and this is so easily forgotten, this basically, I don't know exactly how it works, but as you know, this is an air-cooled engine and relies on the air being blown around the engine and these cooling fans, uh, fins um, to cool the engine. So this is actually a deflector that fits uh, on this side underneath here onto the block and deflects the air in a certain way to keep things cool. Otherwise, I think you can have overheating problems. So let's go and see where this goes. Okay, quite simply, bottom of the engine where the sump plug is and then this you see it has like these little indentations that basically clicks into there and clicks into the bottom and then you put your head on top and it holds everything in place. You can't put this in afterwards because you have your um, push rod tubes in the way so very important to put it in before you put the head on. Double check before you put the head on that you have the arrows on the top of your pistons pointing towards the flywheel. Okay, next up, this can be a little bit fiddly. So you obviously need to make sure that your um, push rod holes line up so you don't put it on the wrong way, but I think you'll pretty much find out as soon as you did that. And uh, you don't put any sealant or anything on here. I think on Type 4 motors it has like a copper ring on here, but on these Type 1 engines you don't put anything, it just faces against there. So obviously make sure your surfaces are clean and no nicks or scratches or whatever because you have sealing problems. So we basically slide the head on like so. And now for the fiddly bit. So this is where I make it look more difficult than it probably is. But you have to, there probably is an easier method of doing this, but I kind of managed on the other side. So you basically have to lift the head, sneak that under there and juggle all four in. Oh my God, I made that look easy, didn't I? Okay, so it has these nice thick washers for the heads. So they are obviously eight studs. And then we have these particular style of nuts and they take a 15 millimeter socket. So I'll just go around and just hand tighten these on. Okay, let's get talking. So I have the book open on the correct page showing the sequence that you um, the pattern that you tighten these bolts up you have to use a certain pattern so it evenly um, tightens so i have also converted because the book shows the torque figures in um, foot pounds and the torque wrench that i'm using is in newton meters so um, you do them in segments of different torque settings so i've just converted them there so the first stage, it says, uh, in this diagram, I'm not sure if you can see it. Maybe you can pause the video if you're doing this yourself to get the figures. So we're gonna do this figure A first, and it says, snug them to seven foot pounds. So that's really light. That's actually under 10 Newton meters. And my torque wrench doesn't actually go down. It actually starts at 20. So I'm gonna put it on like as little as possible. And then I'm just gonna go on the sequence and just, just snug them. Two, uh, three, four, and five, six, Seven, eight. Okay, it also mentions in the book that because this is a flat four engine and it's like a big sandwich, and due to the soft aluminium case, to equal the stresses when you tighten these, you should alternate between each cylinder when you tighten them. So we've snugged this one up, we're gonna turn the engine over to the other side and do the same.
Okay, so now it's upside down. So I just put turn the book upside down, make it a bit easier. So it says number one. So they're snugged. So now we will do the first of the three main torque settings. So the first setting is 20 newton meters which is 15 foot-pounds of torque and then the sequence we're going to tighten them is this diagram B. Right so number one to 20 newton meters. Go to number two. Okay, so that's the first stage. So we're back around to the other side again, the left hand side of the engine, and it's the same sequence as the previous setting. So now we're going to set the torque wrench to 20 foot-pounds which equates to 27 newton meters so set to 27 let's go okay back to the other side Okay, so the third and final setting is 20 foot, 23 foot pounds or 31 Newton meters. So again, we'll set this, that's 31. And it's the same sequence as the last two tightening sequences. So number one, Last but not least. Okay, what I normally do, once you've done your final torque setting, is I just go around them all. And you don't need to do a pattern for this. Just to double check that they haven't come loose at all. There we go. And then we'll do the other side and then they are torqued. Okay, so there you go. They are both torqued. Um, hope it's been um, helpful and we'll get on with the rockers next and start putting the fuel pump, um, the oil cooler and everything else. We also need to do the flywheel. I'll show you how to set the shims for the flywheel. I haven't actually decided whether to go 12 volt or retain the six volt flywheel. I think I actually have a spare 12 volt one, but I'm not sure yet and I can change it at a later date if I choose to. I also need to do all the tinware and I haven't decided whether to strip all the paint off the old stuff and repaint it or to keep the patina on the stuff that I have because then it will kind of um, match the rest of the car. So um, yes, again, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Um, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Until next time, thanks.